Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we will talk about aliasing, also known as the aliasing effect. So let's dive right into the topic. Let's assume you want to measure a signal. So let's take a look on this signal, which is a nice sine wave, very regular, very smooth, everything is perfectly fine, just a perfect signal. To give you a bit of a perspective, let's say this distance, one segment of our x-axis is 0.1 seconds. And since we want to measure this signal, of course we have to answer the question, how often are we going to measure? In case we have a super slow signal, of course we could use a multimeter and measure manually several times. Or in case we have a fast signal like this one with a high frequency, we would use a scope, but also the scope has a certain rate how often it measures. And the focal point is how often do we have to measure to replicate this signal in our measurement as good as possible. So let's assume we are going to measure here at the beginning and we're going to measure here after 0.15 seconds. So all the other measurements will be in the same interval. What our scope will do now is it tries to connect all those measurement points to create one signal or to calculate one signal in case we have a digital scope. So our signal would look something like this. And while it's already quite obvious that this is not the red signal, the original signal, our green measurement is totally different, it's still kind of similar. Of course our amplitude is not higher than the amplitude of our original signal, even though it could be a lower amplitude in case we shift this whole measurement points by a bit forwards or backwards. Anyway, the question is how false is our measurement? So let's check for the calculation quickly. Frequency is one divided by the period time and the period time in our case of the original signal is 0.2 seconds. So let's put this into our calculation and we will end up with five Hertz. Even though we are measuring two times per period time of the original signal, we're already ending up with a totally different period time of our measured signal. So getting back to the same calculation, measuring our period time, we have 0.6 seconds for one period of our measured signal or our modulated signal. Putting these values in our calculation is one divided by 0.6 seconds. We end up with 1.66 Hertz. So beside the fact that it's obviously a different signal, if we take a look on the actual frequencies, we see there is a huge difference. The frequency of our original signal is more than three times bigger than the frequency of what we measure. And this difference in measured frequency versus original frequency or the capability to measure the signal at all and modulate a signal that's at least close to what the original signal looks like this difference, this deviation is called a lysing effect. So that's basically all you need to know about a lysing effect itself. Of course, there are more related topics, like how often do you have to measure to avoid this mistake, this measurement mistake, this aliasing effect. But that's something for the next video. So make sure to be subscribed, give a thumbs up in case you liked it and see you next time.